What's good, Car Family? Happy Saturday. Um, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> um, that was Roger Stallback to Drew Pearson in 1975. Um, the, the infamous Hail Mary play, um, the 1975 uh, NFL uh, Divisional Playoffs versus the Minnesota Vikings. Um, the Cowboys at the time were trailing 14 to 10. The game was winding down. Um, if you've never read the story, is they talked to Roger Stallback after the game, and you know he said he just said a hail mary and threw the ball, and and uh, Pearson was able to, as you see, make the catch, cradle it on his hip, run into the end zone, and it's become one of the iconic plays in in NFL history and of the 70s and. Um, especially for Cowboys fans and, and that, that, that Cowboys team that, that really came into prominence and into, into their own in the 70s. Um, uh, Vikings, Paul Krause was the second defender to come into the pitcher on that play. And it's, it's you know, he's, uh, uh, he always said that Pearson pushed off on that play, uh, pushing the, the other defensive back away. Um, when you watch it, I, I don't really see it, um, especially the way they call it these days. Um, I, I don't really see it, but uh, uh, Paul Kraus, from my understanding, he, you know, has been like super jaded about that his, his entire life. You know, Pearson pushed off, and um, but regardless of whether he pushed off or not, it ended up counting as a touchdown. It was a huge play in Cowboys history and Drew Pearson history. Um, Cowboys went on to win the uh, NFC Championship versus the Rams that year and would eventually lose to the Steelers in the Super Bowl as those two teams battled it out to see which team would be the team of the decade. And it would end up being the Steelers, um, with the Steelers taking four Super Bowls and Dallas, of course, winning two. Um, I, I wanted to take that play and this, this time to kind of show some of my Pearson collection and just talk about Drew Pearson as a player, as a wide receiver. And I don't want to make this completely a Drew Pearson, you know, why Hall of Fame conversation. But I, I, I do start this talk with um, I, I absolutely believe Pearson should be in the NFL Hall of Fame. So I'll talk a little more about what I think are Pearson's Hall of Fame credentials a little later in the video. But for now, let's, let's talk about the cards. Um, what, what, what you have here is, this is something I did when I first got back into cards. Um, as a kid, these ones on the bottom, the, this is what I had, the 84, 83, 82, 81, and the 80. Um, I didn't have any of these ones on the top row. And as a kid, you know, these were unattainable to me. These weren't cards that you easily found. They, they, you didn't have the the avenues to find cards that you do now. But you know, when I got back into collecting, I got I hopped on eBay, and pretty quickly found a '75 rookie, '76, '77, '78, and '79. A couple of these might have been given to me. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I've got doubles of some of these. Um, so I don't totally recall if if I had to pick a favorite um, as far as card design, I really really dig the '77. Um, I just love the banner up top. Um, as far as the pose, I really like the '78. I really like how you know uh, rough and gruff uh, Pearson looks in those photos as, compared to the perfect afro picks in the first three and the handlebar mustache he just looks rough in that in that uh in that 78 card and of course that that represents a year that the cowboys uh won the super bowl so i call this when you when you put together uh, i like to do it with tops i've done this with several cowboys i call it a legacy collection and it's just the base cards for every year that player had a card in the NFL. This doesn't represent every year that Pearson played because he played in, in 73 also. And as you see, he doesn't have a card for 73. But Pearson played for 11 years and he's got 11 tops base cards. Um, for those that don't know, um, he was probably going to retire anyway, but in the spring of 84, um, probably about the time I was seeing this card, um, Pearson was driving 
and he was in a car accident. He fell asleep at the wheel, and uh, a pretty bad car accident. His brother was in the car with him, killed his brother, and uh, Pearson had his kidney was damaged really bad, a long recovery, and he did retire. Um, and there's all kinds of stories about Pearson battling uh, with the guilt, you know, of, of being the driver of that vehicle when his brother was killed. Um, statistically, um, if, if you take a look at Pearson's career, you know, it's important when you look at players like Drew Pearson, players from the 70s, that you compare them with their peers of that era, that you don't compare them to receivers of today because the game was much different in the, in the 70s and the early 80s. Um, you know, a, a NFL quarterback would lead the league in passing with under 3,000 yards. Um, rare were receivers that caught for over 1,000 yards. Um, and Pearson, you know, I, I don't think necessarily that he cements himself statistically, but he is good enough against his peers statistically. Um, you take a guy like Lynn Swan. Um, Lynn Swan never had a 1,000-yard season. Uh, he is in the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, only once in his, in, in his career did Lynn Swan have more than 60 catches. Um, same for Pearson. Uh, but Pearson did have two 1,000 yard seasons. He did play longer than Swan. Hey, he won a Super Bowl just like Swan. Um, and also Pearson, like Swan, was on the all decade team in the 70s. Uh, they were your two wide receivers, Lynn Swan and Drew Pearson. Uh, Pearson is the only offensive member of the all-decade team in the 1970s that is not in the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, he was obviously the first uh, the the first in a long lineage, if you want to call it that, of Cowboy 88s. Um, he, is, uh, he is in the Cowboys' ring of honor. Um, he is a fixture in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Um, he was known for clutch catches like the one you saw in the video, um, he was known to be a precise route runner, uh, excellent hands, and most of all, Drew Pearson was known to make big plays, um, big clutch plays, and that's what he did throughout his career. I'm not going to show a ton of videos of that, but he was a dynamic clutch receiver, and when I think about my childhood, and you know, I was watching the Cowboys in these years, um, it's amazing because Drew wasn't all that dynamic in these years, but he's definitely a fixture of, of my memories of football. Um, this card here in 1979, Drew had, did have another year where he was over a thousand yards. I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, 55 catches, 10, 1026 on the yardage, eight touchdowns. And Tony Hill was over 1,000 that year, too. So the Cowboys had two receivers over 1,000 yards. That was Roger Stallback's final year. And it would have, you know, another point with the statistics, it, they only played 14 games a season up until 1978. So it would have been interesting to see what Pearson and Stallback would have done with uh, the different type of offense. The the rules changed in the mid to late 70s, uh, which – allowed defensive backs to do less uh, downfield. And, of course, they added the two games. Um, I think if you you incorporate all of that and that into the Cowboys' offense, I think Pearson would have put up numbers comparable to what you see today. He was that good. He was that great of a receiver. Uh, and definitely, like I say, amongst his peers, he, he was as good as it gets. Um, so I'm going to pause, and I'm going to show my autos that I have a Pearson, do a little more talking, and I'll wrap this up. Okay, so what you see in the background is uh, some autographs that I've got of Drew Pearson. Um, in the very back with the silver ink, uh, that's an 8 by 10 photo of Pearson. I'll, I'll get it out so you can have a little better look at it. Um, I bought this several, several years ago. I, I loved it because it had the silver ink Pearson 88 thought it was a nice pose of him. Um, I love the old Cowboys, uh, lighter blue color pants. Um, those to me are just iconic, beautiful uniforms. Um, one of my 
favorite pieces of memorabilia that I have. Um, the unfortunate thing about this photo, um, I went the other day, I had bought some nicer frames that were matted. This is what, you know, I just, this is the frame I stuck them in, you know, years ago. So I bought these nicer matted frames and I went to move this to a new frame. And when I did, the photo is stuck to the glass in this frame. And if I pull it out, it's going to pull some of the photo off with it. So that particular photo is going to live in that frame forever, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the two cards. Um, so this was this was my first uh, 2017 Panini Limited. Um, I actually got this one in a break with uh, Snodzilla, uh, Pat. So I ended up at 17 out of 25. And I ended up pulling a Drew Pearson. Um, obviously, I was super, super stoked to pull that. Here you see his auto on a sticker. Still a very nice card. Very sweet card. Was an awesome addition to my collection. Uh, the second one, for <clears throat> I'm going to give a special shout out to Eloy the Goat Flores. This is his card. Definitely check him out. He does breaks and videos on his YouTube channel. Great guy. Um, ended up meeting, I already knew him, but uh, ended up hooking up, hanging out with Eloy at Nationals. And um, we're sitting there at the table, and he's like, oh, yeah, I got you something. And part of his VIP pass was you're able to get autographs. And he picked up this for me. So this, as you can see, it's an 83 Tops Drew Pearson but I think this is beautiful and very fitting for this video. You know, it's personalized, so to Scott, that's me. And he wrote Hail Mary on it. Um, I I thought that was the coolest thing ever, man. Um, you know, iconic play, like I said earlier, in history. And that he wrote that on this card and then the beautiful autograph underneath. Um, Eloy, I really, really appreciate you snagging this for me, man. Um, you know that's that's the thing about collecting and, and being a fan of, of a team. You know these are these are just pieces of history and pieces uh pieces of your memories and and your heart and you know to add things like this to your collection for your entire life. You know for it to have a story of where you got it, how you got it, who you got it from. Um, really cool, man. So I appreciate you. You know adding that little that little chunk really to, to, to my life. Um, that's pretty, pretty cool, man. Um, the, the last thing I had on my mind was just that, you know, there's a lot of players that have been on the Cowboys that just really, to me are true Cowboys through and through. They represent the Cowboys. You know, these are the, just the type of players, man. When I, when I see these players, I think Dallas Cowboys when I when and guys like Drew Pearson, I've said this before about other players, but this is my childhood right here. And this is, this was heroes of my childhood. Um, you know, could do no wrong. And I'm not saying that he did no wrong, but, um, just an awesome, awesome player. And I really, really look forward to, um, Pearson, uh, getting into the hall of fame. I hear that in 2020, they're, they're going to expand the number of players that are taken into the hall of fame and they're going to, allow in some players that they think were unjustly not allowed in previously. And I, I think when you look at that all decade team in the seventies, when you take the seventies in context for what happened in the seventies and what, what the seventies were about in the NFL, uh, Drew Pearson not being in the hall of fame is a grave, grave injustice. So I do believe that in 2020, uh, we'll see him get in, and uh, I can't wait to watch his induction speech because, as many, many of you know, he is a great speaker.
Hey, what's up everybody? I did want to add a couple more things to this video that I meant to get in earlier. Um, the, the first part of the video where you saw Pearson catch the Hail Mary, if you're a Cowboys fan, do yourself a favor after you get done watching this video and look this up on YouTube. Hail Mary, a tribute to Drew Pearson, Dallas Cowboys number 88. Um, it's a great video, a tribute to the Hail Mary catch, a tribute to Drew Pearson. Um, a lot of former Cowboys uh, speaking about Pearson, his role, his impact on them and the Cowboys, the NFL, and why he's not, you know, what, and about him not being in the, in the NFL Hall of Fame. Great video and in a lot of ways inspired me to want to make this video. Um, secondly, lastly, not leastly, when you watch these videos, these, um, I do these, these videos of Cowboys history. Yes, they're my memories. They are, they're my childhood. They're what I remember that it, that is part of it. But you know, uh, the other part of it is, you know, I do these videos for Cowboys fans. Um, you know, this is, this is showing a history of a, a tradition, a history of, of excellence, of championships, of, of honor, of, of just a team with a rich, rich tradition and history of winning. And, you know, if you don't, I, my point is, if you don't have that, you know, if, if your team doesn't have that, I'm speaking to you, Panthers fans, because um, you're all over my feed, you're all up in my page. Um, keep your mouth shut. Be humble. You'll get your you'll get your moment at some point. But right now, ain't it? And 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 I don't understand why you pick out teams that do have that sort of tradition and history to try and trash. Other than you're just, you know, you don't have it, and the other teams do. So you decide to just badmouth people instead. I don't badmouth you because you got nothing. So don't badmouth us because we have a rich tradition. Tradition. Appreciate y'all watching. Keep it real. Cowboys for life.